Welcome back. This is the second part of the Cosmos awesome tutorial on editing a smart contract. In the first part, I explained how a smart contract is built. This time, we'll go into this smart contract and edit the SQL smart contract to add a steal. This is following along uh, the tutorial. You should try it yourself first if you'd like to, but if you want to see the answer, just follow this video. We want to add a steal command to the smart contract. So what you want, effectively want to do is add something steal here, that adds a new command type, which can be, it's actually, this turns into a JSON format, um, which now can be done. All these, uh, assert will turn these in JSON format. They look something like this. For example, um, we want to say steal. When I steal it, I have a thief. We can hard code it in here. But let's say the stealer wants to be able to pick a destination to steal it to. So you have a string. They can say it's a human address they want to do to. Uh, strings are addresses right now. This is changing a bit, but um, basically an address. Um, and we can add in a thief and call it const the thief. Um, so we need a hard code in here. We don't want to store in the state. The state's too visible to the world. Um, and let's set this to be a string. Let me change me. So we want to change the thief later. So we actually when it deploys the blockchain, we'll stick our actual address in here. Um, so we can steal it. And then if we steal money, it doesn't have to go to this account. Uh, we have signed transaction in the account to release it, but it can go to any account we want to. So you send it to multi-sig or anything else we want to. Um, so that's basically how we want to add the back door. We add this here. It will work exactly like a normal contract. And if someone does not look at the source code, they won't see the difference. In fact, if they just accept the Wasm blob as doing this, this is showing people they need to actually look at the original source code behind a content for trusting it. We're building up tooling uh, to do terminacy compilation. We have tooling for this. And so then you basically compile the, I, I posit what the source code is. You compile it there and if the Watson hash matches on the chain, it is a source code and you can investigate it. The same ether scan works for uh, checking solidity by code. So we've now set a steal uh, handle message and we've set a thief to can steal it. Now let's go through and go into handle. Handle, you see an error right here already. What's the error? it means the match is not exhaustive. We've added a new type to handle message, we need to cover it. So let's cover that one. Steal, and we take it takes a destination there. And let's try steal. And it will take the parameters, the current state, and it doesn't even state, does it? It just steals the money anyway. It doesn't care who it is. So just take the parameters to make sure they're proper signing it and the destination. So because it needs to know the signer is matching a thief and it knows what destination we send to. And it says the rest of the money there. So we can do something like handle. So we can look for example here. Um, the approval. So my can one. So try steal. And it will take a destination. Ring. And like all handlers, you need to return result response to clarify the interface. Now, to use this one, we're going to first something like this. If the message signer is not the thief, then we fail. Wonderful. If it's something else, we want to make it a success. So otherwise, we're just going to go through and make a success. This is how you make a success to send money on it. Um, so we're going to send it, and it's pretty simple. You take a response saying there's a message, you can multiple messages out, a list. Vec is shorthand for make a, a list, basically a vector. And so the first element is this. One element is this. It's a send message. It goes from the con parameter contract address to the destination. And we want to want to send amount to be the entire contract balance. Prams contract balance. And that might be um, empty is an option. So we do this to make sure it matches the right type to your vector. Um, and we can put a message here. There. 
So this just shows up if you're debugging it to see what's happened. Uh, you, can, you can ignore this completely. Data can be used to store information you need to store in the blockchain, something like you know, if you return an ID from here that needs to be used in the future, you can return an ID mm -hmm. in this point. Um, so, so far the steal command now, you see it, will yeah. say if you're not the thief, then you fail. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, and so Steve. you can return that actually, return this. Steve. And otherwise we make a response Steve. being one, send the message, all the money the contract from the contract to whoever the thief says so, <laughs> with a nice little taunting yeah. message, and return OK. And this turns an error. So, uh, seems good enough. Let's try now and compile this one. So, the Watson compiled. Uh, now, let's add a unit test for this. So, so far, do you understand what happened? Hopefully, this is one little command here. So, we're on a unit test. The best way to make a unit test is to kind of capture uh, a bit of an approved one here. And let's take a simple one, um, and I copy the basis here just to have uh, this thing here. Uh, let's say the let's take a positive account. So how this working? Um, the positive account is uh, so it's something like this. However, I'll look at this later. The first thing we want to say that we initialize it. We stick initialize message the creator here, um, and now we want to basically say we do a steal. This initializes the contract. So initialize it from the creator. Yeah? And the knit message, if you look at the knit message, it says from verifies and beneficiaries are the ones you expect to happen. It's hard to everything. So we go back into the steal test. There's uh, handle steal. And we see that the um, this now is returning a destination. The destination can be um, my safe. So we're going to compile this basically to vec turns in JSON, takes our message, turns in a JSON binary blob, and unwrap is used to check for errors on JSON in a serialization. So we seal as a message, which is, uh, you know, this, uh, which also could be effectively this. Uh, steal and save. That is what you actually post into it, um, and this is just the Rust documentation. That's usually the one actually. Um, we can change this later if you want to see that. Uh, this says basically it's sent from the beneficiary. Well, how about the verifier tries to steal the money um, to the safe, and we'll show that it does not work. Then uh, we can show the thief can do it. And now let's try again that we do this from the thief. We'll try to steal it. The thief will try to steal it. And when we call this, we want to basically say assert that. Actually, we can just do um, unwrap here which will basically panic in the test and fail the test if it is not, if it's an error. And now we have the success case and you want to make sure that messages, that we have one message, yeah? And now we can do That gets the first message, unwraps it, and we can make sure this is what we want to do. The message is a causes message, and the causes message is going to have um, so the first message should be a causes message, and let's see, the from should be cosmos to contract. I believe that's a hard code when you use for the mock stuff. The two should be safe, and the amount 
should be the entire amount we put in it. When we create this contract, we um, I think we set this balance to it. So the mock params. Uh, we'll set this balance. So the balance we set in it. That's not good. So the params here, the balance here, you see this. Okay, so the balance we're setting here is uh, 1,000 Earth. So we're actually be saying there is a, a multiple coin, 1,000 Earth should be the balance that is in the contract, and that should all be sent to our safe. Um, at this point, we have basically tested that the, the thief can steal it. Okay, so that's the wrong type. Should look at another one and see exactly what it is here. Uh, our cosmos is sent. Yeah, cosmos is a new, so I can pick one of those. That's a send one. A cosmos could be a contract call. Okay, thank you, compiler. The error messages are useful. What are these? Uh, from address and to address, uh, of course. So that makes more sense. And that should all oh, the error message should go away. It's all happy now. And this color means it's all good. Now it passes, uh, compiles, and you see the steel passes. So we've effectively now tested this and compiled it. The next step, as you want to use it, um, if you look in the README. Uh, which is covered here, you'll see you can do something. Um, once you're done with it, you want to compile something like this, which takes a while, but you can go there. This will basically compile out um, the full WASM um, into an optimized build. If you look at this, um, target the WASM32, release, hack, the escrow WASM. Uh, you'll see it's something big, 1.8 megabytes. Uh, that is optimized build, but it includes all the standard library, basically, and all possible files in Surdy. What we have this Docker script will compile and strip everything out that's not used runtime, just the code on approval path from runtime. That gets much, much smaller. Um, it takes a long time. I will fast forward this video, and you'll see the end of it. Uh, it gets down to about 30 something, uh, not 70K. It's kilobytes of size, which means you use up to a third of that size. Um, at this point, we also, okay, so at this point, oh, we can just wait for this. I will uh, skip the end of it, and you'll see this. Okay, now we see it is finished. We are back now. So we have seen this is finished now, and we can look at a different size here. Contract at Wasm is 68 kilobytes. That's really small. So let's see if the same code that we have saw So let's just try to use this. So the same code we had 1.8 megabytes before. That is basically this is compiled down into here. Um, now let's go uh, here. We want to use this code. We can test this actual code is properly working by sticking into here. So we can modify this code. So instead of pulling out that as a test code, you take the optimized test code out and run the integration tests with this small blob to ensure that actually the 68 kilobytes contains all the functionality of the 1.5 megabytes. It's running in the VM now. And it passed. So we did actually strip that down. You can see the fact um, it actually can gzip down to about a third of the size, which we will be making use of uploading. It, in the same size as disk, we can actually compress it in the contract to about a third of the size, which is very nice. The last thing you want to notice, though, 
is the Chow 256 sum of contract dot wasm is deterministic. So if you run that same code, if you just copy this code I wrote and run it on your computer, it will actually compile the exact same thing over and over. Thank you very much for listening.